Okay, you're making gears, you want to measure them, you want to do a little better than one of these, we'll show you how all this stuff works and we'll show you a really inexpensive way to do it. We'll cover it all. Okay, so these are kind of the standard tools you'll find when you first start assessing gears to make gears. These laser cutout templates. Uh, our friend down under, Mr. Bruce, makes these. Uh, the new ones have 14 and a half inch pressure angle and 20. The old ones will only have 14 and a half. And you may run into the Van Curen pens. They're a great way to measure gears. You need the book too starts getting a little expensive to do this. These are actually require a lot of dexterity from the operator to use properly. Measurement over pins is uh, the Van Curen method is great, but it, it requires a special set. Here's a standard set of pins. We'll show you how to use those. It's probably the best and cheapest way. A gear vary roll is another method. And then there's even more expensive methods. So we go from relatively inexpensive but the quality of your answer is a little low to a much better quality of answer but you're going to spend 500 bucks to back down to a pin box you may have in your shop if you just had the calculator so these happen to be van curen pins but they are just standard sized pins they're not sized for a certain pitch necessarily so we'll use this as the equivalent of what you probably have in your shop and then we'll look at our calculator. But let's talk about this piece right here. This is called a very roll. And right now there's, there's nothing in it, but there's a really nice tense gauge here. And the way this works is a post goes here that's uh, uh, the same size as the idea of your gear. There's a little shaft goes here, so your gear will roll right here. And then you put a uh, master gear on the other side. And then you bring the two together and you roll them and you see what kind of run out you have in this gauge. It's actually what it looks like. It's a lot more sophisticated than you might think. But even in this form, in the used format, you're going to be up in the two, three thousand dollar range for one of these. And then a couple of hundred dollars per master gear that you use to check your gear. So really when you start manufacturing gears is when you need one of these many quantities so you can afford to have all these master gears. So this is a fairly common one, the very rule. And what I don't have here is what I can't afford on the next one over. You know, the next highest up cost wise would be a, a CMM that has gear software in it. I don't have one, but you're going to spend $250,000 plus for one of those plus the software. So there's some much more exotic ways to measure gears, but if we get back to it, the measurement over pins is, is what we're going to focus on and we'll show that we can get a really good calculation and be right on the involute. These, uh, these gears here have a pitch line and we really want to be measuring on the curved part of that tooth near the pitch, which is uh, not halfway but close on that gear. And to be able to do that, there's a range there that's acceptable. All right, so this is a 40 tooth, two module metric gear. And we chose this because these are, it's a kind of, it's a big tooth gear, so it's kind of easy to see in there. And we have the correct set of pins sitting in here for this gear. So let's just show you the method of measurement over pins. This is an easy, even tooth gear. We chose an easy one and I don't have a, uh, this is just what I have, so we'll just use it. But this is the method. You get the pins that are directly across from each other. And you make sure that everything's all at right angles in there. And you make your measurement. All right. Now, this is a uh, six inch um, caliper. Looks like we got a two inch anvil in it and so on. So this is uh, roughly a couple inches, but 
I'll measure I'll measure this. Let's check it. So that's probably 10 and 75. Let me write that number down real quick. So I've moved this around a little bit so I can see it and you can see it at the same time. We'll show this in a screencast, but uh, this is measuring just under 3.4. 3.385 is what it looks like on the dial here. So most of these gears are cut not exactly at a standard gear size. They're a little less. So they're either it's either worn a little bit or they put a little backlash in it. Okay, so it's a little smaller than the ideal calculation here of gears. There is a profile shift in our calculator, but we didn't know what it was, so we left it at zero. So standard change gear, 40 tooth. This is how you measure it. And, and here are the calcs. So we'll, we'll jump into our screencast and we'll come right back. Okay, so we were uh, out in the shop looking at gears and let's come into our resources calculator uh, and look at measurement over pins. All those were 40 tooth change gears, two module for the big one. Pressure angle is 14 and a half. Pin diameter, uh, we chose them for the large one. The pin diameter, we may not know to start with, so just leave it blank, leave this blank. Depending on how good your shop is, you know, we'll leave that there. So the first time you run the calculator, it tells you that you didn't specify a pin, but it tells you the pin size, the minimum and maximum right here. So you need to go to your pin collection, choose a pin in this range, inch or metric, doesn't matter. And in this case, we know on this one, we've gone to our pin kit and our pin is uh, 0.15 inches, but we started this calculator in millimeters. So we'll, we'll convert that pin diameter to uh, millimeters 3.81. Oh, and we'll recalculate. Now it tells us that our measurement over pins ought to be 3.4 inches, which is within our pin range. And it gives us uh, all of our key information. So when we go measure it on the desk, we'll get it. All right. So that's how you make the first pass. And then the second pass, once you put your pin in that you do have, and you'll know what kind of measurement you need to make in your shop. Here's the measurement over pins. Here's your answer. So these are even tooth gears, but nonetheless, that's 40 teeth enough that you can sometimes mistake and get off a of gear. So I always use a little ruler like this. Just get the Sharpie involved so you stay lined up. So all three of these have been measured. They all have their pins. They all match the example here that we'll show. But I did the calculations here. So here's all the diameters that we find by calculation, as long as there's no profile shift coefficient, which is really... A fancy word for saying I'm going to put some backlash in my gear. So I ran all the calculations and then I measured all these accurately. Now, these aren't NIST controlled caliper devices or anything. And there's three different ones here. I know we're violating all sorts of metrology rules, but they all measure smaller than by calculation. All right. So this difference is delta 11 thousandths, 32 thousandths, 15 thousandths. That's how much smaller these gears are than the ideal gear with no shift. So it's either a combination of wear or they built them with backlash in them more likely. So if you get a gear and you want to reverse engineer it and then make a new one, you'll, you'll probably get the tooth count correct. You might even get the OD or ID correct, but uh, you can't really get in there and, and uh, examine the pitch line unless you have pins. And, and a calculator to calculate all these things. As one may expect, you could use another size pin. The pin range is, is a little bit narrow here, but a smaller pin would go further down in the root, down here, and a larger pin is gonna be used to measure on the involute further out here. But regardless, the answer you'll get can still be compared to what you input up top. So, if you have the input from your shop and some pins, you can use our calculator online and you can hone in a gear and make it even better than you might have otherwise. It's a much better tool than some of these combined and it's much, much quicker. So pins in your shop, our calculator, knowing a little bit about gears and backlash and uh, 
you can generate a better product. And Okay, so we calculated one example, but let's bring all three gears into a spreadsheet and do some further integration and analysis. The main thing I want to show here is uh, the astute the astute observer was probably thinking the whole time, hey, that's a 20 degree pressure angle ang gear. So I did the calculations at both, both 14 and a half and 20. And sure enough, the 20 degree pressure angle, the difference between what we calculated here and what the actual measurement are is only 4,000. So these two gears turned out to be very close to the standard gear with no profile shift, maybe a tiny bit. And this middle gear seems to have a little more slop in it or I need to do some more measurements, but even if I clean it up, this difference is going to get even bigger. But regardless, super helpful to put straight into Excel. The formats come in real nicely so you can dress it up and do stuff like that. So that's the usefulness of the calculator and its interaction with Excel. Mm -hmm.